Most of us think of capital as what we own, what's ours. And most farmers in this day and age know that what's ours, what we own, mm. often isn't enough mm. for efficient operation. Mm. This little pig just doesn't have all it takes to go to market these days. Owned capital usually won't stretch to cover all of the seed, feed, lands, hands, animals, flammables, chemicals, blue jeans, and farm machines it takes to conduct a profitable farm operation and enjoy some of the material benefits of the good life. Most of us require, in addition to our own capital, another source of capital. Hmm. Credit. But mention credit, and some farm businessmen still conjure up a vision of bad apples, of credit as a necessary evil, whereas the real sin is the misuse of credit for the wrong purposes as the rest of the business community agrees. The rest of the business community uses both kinds of capital as tools for expanding operations while increasing profits. The biggest business in the world, American agriculture, with assets in the hundreds of billions and with capital requirements per worker more than double those for industry, is steering away from the misuse of credit and toward a more profitable operation when it considers credit for what it can be, a capital idea. For a moment, let's get away. Let's get out of our usual working clothes and be hunters. Hunters for the way to a more profitable operation. In some ways, operating an agricultural enterprise is like being on a big hunt for profits. To be successful, you have to know where you've been, where you want to go, and how you plan to get there. Here we no, no, we're not farmers, we're hunters now. Oh, yes, here we are, and we're sure of our location because of the landmarks. And because of the records we've made of our progress so far. We know where we want to go. Now, how are we going to get there? We could go the long way around, using just what we have to go on, and hope that we won't run into anything that will keep us from making it. We could wait until... until it freezes over and skate across, if we think it'll ever freeze and we're not leery of thin ice. Or we could enlist the aid of friendly natives who will go with us all the way. We can float alone, so to speak. We can use credit as a means to get where we want to go. Credit is a capital idea when its use is a part of your business plans to increase profits and enjoy a higher standard of living. When you use it in drawing up a realistic map that provides the answers to three questions. Before you can plan, before you can intelligently look ahead, you have to look back, back into your records. And by the way, what's the state of your record system? Is it a hodgepodge of bills and receipts that may or may not catch all the pertinent information that should be going into the record? If so, isn't an itemized listing of income and expenses which you, your wife or your accountant keeps faithfully, but which may not provide enough basis for you to measure the efficiency of your operation for forward planning. Better, but perhaps not as useful, as a computerized record-keeping system such as those favored in other areas of business, and increasingly so by good farm managers. If this is your system, it not only maps out where you've been in great detail, but also keeps you wired to the present ups and downs of your various enterprises, 
so that you can accentuate the positives and eliminate the negatives as you go along. Whatever your record keeping methods, your records should be accurate. And here's why. Accurate records can shine a lot of light on where you want to go. Areas you may have been in the dark on. Say you've been growing gidgets because your daddy did and his daddy before him. But you also raise some gizmos on the side. Tracking things down through the use of your records, you discover that gidgets grow 16% on the investment. But gizmos grows 21% on the investment. Does that put a different light on how you should be operating? Should you go on growing gidgets with gizmos on the side? Or wouldn't it be more profitable to grow gizmos with gidgets on the side? Or maybe gizmos altogether and forget the gidgets? Even if you must arrange for credit to get into gizmos full scale, wouldn't you be money ahead? The thing is, you can't really decide which way to go for the big profit until your records have brought the facts to light. Whatever your answers to where you've been and where you're going, it's in answering how do you plan to get there that credit as a capital idea becomes important. From being at the controls of the food and fiber special before, farmers know the track ahead isn't always on the same grade. There are going to be times when income from farm operations has you on the upgrade, and other times when expenditures have you on the downgrade. Unless, of course, one works out signals with someone who will help him bridge the gaps. managers map out the course ahead, planning for their credit needs. They take into account that some gaps are longer than others. They know that long and intermediate term credit will be necessary for some things and short term credit for others. And they plan never, never, never to pay for a big inflexible bridge when a short flexible one will do. In fact, Good farm managers will never pay one cent more for any bridge than they have to. They pay off their credit obligations at the earliest possible moment. And that's because they understand the difference between rate and cost. For those who are hung up on rates, here's what the difference means. At a certain percent, the use of $20,000 can cost $1,112 for a year if repayments are made periodically and if the interest is figured on the unpaid balance each period. Or the cost can be $1,600 even though the rate stays the same percent if the interest on the original balance for the whole year is added evenly to all payments. When you're working toward more profit don't get hung up on rates. Figure the costs. Now, let's review what it takes to clear the tracks so that one will have available the credit bridges he needs when he needs them at lowest cost. First, a good manager has his records in order, the records that tell him where he's been. Or, for records, substitute the credit terminology, financial statements, inventory, and profit and loss statements. He has mapped out where he wants to go. For big game country, substitute more profitable operation. And he's also mapped out where, when, and in what amounts the use of credit can buoy him up. For this map, his projection of his future financial course, substitute the credit terminology cash flow. Now what he looks for is the right friendly native. 
Friendly natives, substitute the usual name credit sources, come several ways. They may be representatives of financial organizations, or they may be dealers and suppliers, or they may be individuals, such as your landlord or your mother-in-law. Cross her off right now if you want peace in the family. Ask yourself some questions about your possible credit sources. Ask yourself, are they dependable? Will there be enough funds available when they're needed, for as long as they're needed, and as often as they're needed? Helpful hint. Credit sources with one foot on farm ground and the other on Wall Street qualify as dependable, as do certain others. Ask yourself, do these credit sources understand my problems? Have they worked with other farmers and are their business practices geared to the repayment capacities of agricultural enterprises? Do they offer true costs and terms which are competitive? If not, eliminate them. Ask yourself, what else do they offer? Will they provide advice in financial planning and the financial management of my operation? Will they help me to send my kids to college? or help me remodel my house, or help me buy household appliances, as well as provide capital for farm operations. Once you've zeroed in on the credit source that will be the best for you, and showed him the inventory sheets, financial statements, and cash flow projections, which will answer his questions and testify to your repayment capacity, always level with him. You'll both be in the same boat, so, don't try to take on board a heavy load of additional liabilities that might swamp your venture or leave him high and dry. Level with him, as you expect him to level with you. Truth in lending works both ways. Work closely with him by taking periodic soundings, three or four times a year, or monthly or weekly if necessary, to be sure your plan is being carried out as planned. Working closely with him, it's more than likely that you will get where you want to go and bag your trophy, a bigger kitty, as well. The American farmer has more than kept pace with other businesses in his application of technology. As American agriculture's technical skills continue to increase its need for capital, it has become agriculture's business to take a cue from other businesses and industry and use credit to increase profits, to use credit as a capital idea.